Emily and I made a video for this week and it includes a bunch of things that I've been working on like a painting that I've been doing for the last month um, that I started just for fun and I did some printmaking in which I printed with a pasta machine which you know is a lot of fun and uh, very different <laughs> Uh, and I also did some gardening where I totally dug up a border and like planted a bunch of plants um, and then also it begins with um, picking some rhubarb and making um, some kind of dish with it so I hope you enjoy um, I'll see you later bye hi This is Summer. She's been here for about two months and she's very precious. <laughs> I got her at the cat adoption team. There we go. Cat adoption team. And yeah. So now that you've met Summer, I'm gonna show you a painting I've been working on. I started it about a month ago. I took inspiration from one of my favorite paintings that I've done, and I decided to use the same technique for this one, which starts with painting the background in a cool tone that will eventually influence the skin tones as I paint. For this one, I wanted to work with like a really strong, warm orange. It just sounded so lovely. The fun thing about painting like this is that you can immediately start painting and you don't have to worry about sketching or planning or preparing and that's pretty much my favorite way to work. I like to just start painting and problem solve while I work. I think that's just like the most fun part about art is like trying to think of how you get from point A to point B.
So this is the part where I actually garden and I felt like this area needed to be redone just based off of how many plants I had on my deck that were ready to be planted or were pot bound. In Oregon, we've got heavy clay soil that's impossible to work with when it's dry. So there's a window of time to work with it before summer um, because it just hardens up and you can't really amend it. This, this whole plant did not want to come out of the pot. I think I spent like 20 minutes, it felt like 20 minutes trying to get it out. Um, eventually I figured it out where you had to um, make sure like none of the sides were off or tilted while taking it out of the pot. It was wild. And it is really obvious why, because of how pot bound it was. All the roots were just kind of going in a circle. Um, so I had to kind of break them up and make sure they weren't going to just continue um, on that path. Previous to this area just being full of weeds and like two plants, it had a pine bush that I spent last year digging out. The whole bush was like, <laughs> it was like a mini tree. I basically did not feel like really participating in my last term of college that was online. So I just spent like a good two weeks um, digging out two pine trees from this area <laughs> and it was like before I had Animal Crossing so I felt like it was kind of like my own real life Animal Crossing. Yeah so basically the soil was too dry by the time I finished that project for me to do anything with so this is the first time I've had a chance to do something with this area so I'm really happy with it. lavender really happy in Oregon when you have clay soil is to amend the soil and then add in uh, rocks at the bottom so that they're not just sitting in water um, since they're a Mediterranean plant uh, they don't really enjoy soggy living spaces after planting them and I always give them a pretty good water right after transplanting. Off camera I planted this sedum and I think it'll be pretty happy over there. And now that I finished one side I can show you the other side that has not been weeded yet and has to be dug up. That's how much dirt came from one area. Save you time, I already weeded and mixed up the soil so that it's just ready to go. Um, I'm replanting this fig tree that's um, from a little cutting that I took last year. It's currently got so many leaves on it. Um, it looks really sad right now, but in this video, but it's actually pretty happy. These guys are 
uh, plants that I had been gifted from my neighbor and I thought I would make like a little tribute center. Some of them look a little bit rough because they've been through an ice storm, <laughs> but I think they'll be happy um, in a couple months. got to say that I'm actually really proud of myself for this project. I usually don't put together um, like plantings or um, think about actually incorporating different plants together. I got into gardening for vegetables and I didn't really think about garden design and I'm, I'm really happy and pleased that um, I kind of did something that was was gonna make like a really lovely area. Here's the final result and I spent all day on it and I'm very happy with it. Here's what my studio looks like after my birthday. Um, I demanded that we got to do printmaking and I got to try out the pasta machine as a form of printing. So what I had wanted to do for this experiment was to test out the different techniques and the longevity of the ink as it was printed multiple times. And along with that, I wanted to see what the possibility of doing monotypes in a series would be. I'm using a new Akua ink that I just recently got because I have over five colors of ink, yet I didn't have black ink. So I also wanted to test out this ink for that reason too. The way that I make monotypes is by usually painting on a plate, which in this case is uh, a piece of Duralar plastic that's really thin and flexible. I found that the trick is to not add too much ink while painting because it will end up spreading when it goes through the press and that's always just a little bit sad, um, which you can actually see that the first time when I put it through the press it did spread um, on the little pod um, on the left side. It was actually just one line but it spread out more than just one line.
So here I'm adding in a pre-cut piece of printing paper, which uh, I'm soaking in a bath of water so that it helps pick up the ink as it goes through the press. I let it soak for a couple minutes. The pasta press is so tiny that I'm actually having to rip down paper um, smaller than I normally would. Um, and I like to use a piece of newsprint so that when it goes through the press, it actually keeps the press clean. And now I'm blotting the paper with newsprint um, so that it absorbs most of the water while keeping the paper still moist. And traditionally use like a blotting paper. When you're home printing, you can use whatever you wanna use. No one's looking at you or telling you what to do. So, you know, whatever suits you. One of the tricky parts is actually putting the print on the paper. Um, it just takes practice and trusting yourself. So this is where uh, I actually got interrupted by Summer. Um, she comes down ever so often and she mostly lives up in my bedroom. Um, so I have to stop whenever she comes down because she deserves pets. Um, and she meows so quietly that I actually had to up the volume for this. Yeah, that's how quiet she meows. Um, she's a sweet girl. And she has a little string on her, which I will get off in just a second.
enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to try to basically <laughs> uh, upload more videos more often. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week and um, I hope you enjoy it. Bye!